Thanks, Emmett. Thanks, Bill, for allowing us to uh, share with you an update on Azura. Um, we like to say that we're taking a dermatological approach to treat ocular surface disease. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Yep. yep. So we're developing the first ophthalmic keratolytic to treat meibomian gland dysfunction, contact lens discomfort, and blepharitis. Um, our areas of focus, as I said, are those three indications. We have a, a patient-administered treatment, um, which is our lead compound, 001, as well as a physician-administered uh, keratolytic um, in early development. Our lead compound, we're exploring a proof-of-concept study uh, to treat uh, the keratinized material that occurs in contact lens discomfort. And we have a, a chemistry program ongoing that looks at um, treatments that have both keratolytic, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial activity for blepharitis. But the fundamental part of our platform is a, we're focused on lid margin disease and the fundamental aspect of treating the keratinization uh, or the hyperkeratinization that um, uh, goes on. So meibomian gland dysfunction, we've probably heard a lot about it. Um, you know, meibomian glands are modified sebaceous glands, so it's only natural to think of this disease as a dermatological condition. Um, we also know that meibomian gland dysfunction has a significant impact on the signs and symptoms of what we commonly know as dry eye disease. However, yeah, where we're focused as a company is really on obstructive meibomian gland dysfunction. You know, a, and the way we treat it is a disease of blocked orifices, thick lipids, and lipid deficiency. And so really clinically, you know, we get a destabilization of the tear film. That results in a loss of, or an increased rate of evaporation, and therefore the results of the symptoms of evaporative dry eye. So, you know, the use of keratolytics in dermatology has been a key guiding light for us at Azura. You know, meibomian glands and sebaceous glands embryonically come from the same source, so it's only natural to think of meibomian gland dysfunction as really a dermatological disease. And there's a lot of diseases currently in dermatology that are treated by you know, keratolytics. And so this whole process of hyperkeratinization is what we're focused on. Um, there are two key elements of meibomian gland dysfunction that we, are, we can target with a prescription drug. So firstly is the blockage of the gland orifice, um, where you get a hyperkeratinization at the gland orifice, but also you get um, keratinized material in the meibom itself from either the proteins of, of the acini cells, but also keratinized material within the, um, the meibom, which then alters the quality of the meibom. Um, where we're targeting is, is this ab aberrant keratin. Now, there are two approaches to treat, um, you know, you could take to treat aberrant keratin. Firstly, there's an energy element to it, and then chemically. So clearly, you know, um, keratin is a, a normal part of the body system, you know, in hair, fingernails, and so, so forth. And the degree of disulfide bonds has a direct impact on, its, on this keratin's rigidity and stability. So we can take an approach such as thermal energy, um, but in order to break a disulfide bond, you need about 144 degrees Celsius to break a disulfide bond. So, you know, think about the concept of, um, you know, acceptable temperatures for the body and hair. So every time we would have a shower, our hair would melt if, you know, we could satisfy with a 45 degrees breaking of disulfide bonds. Or we can do it chemically, and so, which is our approach. So, our lead compound is selenium disulfide. It's got a unique mechanism of action. Firstly, it's keratostatic. So in other words, it slows down the um, future deposition of keratinocytes. It's keratolytic, so it block, uh, breaks disulfide bonds. It also has this unique property of increasing lipid production. Um, yeah, early on in the 1950s, when this product was first developed for seborrheic dermatitis, one of the clinical manifestations was a side effect of increased lipid production from the sebaceous glands. And so in a disease where you don't necessarily want increased lipid production, such as acne on comatones, um, in a disease like meibomian gland dysfunction, it's possibly a very good um, benefit. And also anecdotally, it's well published that um, selenium disulfide does have a, uh, an impact on controlling demodex mites. So uh, at Azura, we um, have you know, validated the mechanism of action. 
We've shown that the compound has an effect on um, keratinocyte turnover, as well as breaking disulfide bonds, um, in, uh, and therefore being keratolytic, as well as increasing or in inducing lipogenesis. So our first proof of concept study was a small 14 patient proof of concept study in a non-ophthalmic formulation. And really the goals of that study was really, could we break the blockage? Could we enhance you know, tear film quality or, or lipid quality? And could we prevent the process from reoccurring? Because in dermatological conditions, we know when you stop treating uh, conditions such as uh, um, seborrheic dermatitis as well as dandruff, the condition just comes back. And so we saw a six and a half second improvement in tear breakup time in 22 days of bi-weekly uh, bi dosing, as well as a corresponding improvement in, in uh, lipid quality. And when we stopped the, the treatment, we saw that these um, positive outcomes actually went back to baseline for both tear breakup time as well as lipid quality. And so really that validated our understanding of of this condition as really as a dermatological um, uh, disease. So we've developed a unique ophthalmic formulation that capitalises on um, some unique properties. Our goal uh, is really to have this uh, formulation applied to the lower eyelid margin and then the stickiness of the formulation allows it to be transferred to the upper eyelid and it's applied to the patient's uh, eyelids just before they go to bed. Um, we're currently in a phase two slash phase two B study in Australia. It's a dose ranging as well as uh, frequency raising study, which has two cohorts. And we currently have about 45 patients enrolled in that study with the results due to be uh, read out middle of 2020. Thank you.